Good morning, Les. How's it going, Claudia? Doing great. Now, you, you obviously, we know that you have made some big moves since coming to Los Angeles. Do you feel all the trades were worth it, or do the Rams have to win the Super Bowl before you feel satisfied? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, the, to answer that question, we're, we're always trying to put ourselves in the position, right, to compete, to be one of 32. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I think that I think it's a long journey, uh, you know, that with a with a, a lot of group of young men, some some older and younger that that that's definitely fulfilling. So what, the, to answer that quality is this is hey, we got one more game to go. Uh, we know uh, we know the opportunity we have and, and we take it one game at a time and, and, and we'll 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 real reassess the, the season when it's over. But in terms of when you're building a team for a specific year and even one for a little bit longer term vision, right? You really build it to uh, to be able to be a contender. And at that point in time, uh, try to engineer where you are playing your best football when it counts and, and go from there. Thank you. Hey, Jordan, if you give us a second, I'm gonna let Jane Slater jump in here because she has a hit. Real quick, Jane. Thanks, uh, Artis, and thank you so much, Les. Quick question for you. We focus so much, or at least there's been a lot of conversations about the free agents that you've acquired to build this roster. But are we giving enough attention to the mid-round picks that have really been paying off for you, guys like Nick Scott in the postseason? So in other words, the question is, when you're building this roster, how much do what you do in the draft, particularly in the mid-rounds, how important are they for currency for getting those free agents, but also having a good mix with the free agents that you've brought in? Well, to answer your question, <clears throat> Bluntly is no, right? The, the, the shallow story would be, right, the free agents, the, the stars. And I get it. We're in the entertainment business. And so understand why that is, uh, right, interesting uh, content. But I was joking with a few people this week, uh, Jane, that they said, well, how are you spending, right, the couple of weeks leading up to the Super Bowl other than trying to do our part as a front office to, you right, uh, help our players and coach uh, prepare for this in the most least distracted manner is preparing for the draft. And so the draft's very important. We couldn't do what we do, uh, right? We couldn't have the team that we have without the draft and those young players at different times, right? You know, at different times, whether it was Sebastian Joseph Day to start the season, Greg Gaines to finish it, Marquise Copeland to come in there, uh, sometime after we had the COVID outbreak and continue playing, whether it's, you know, Robert Rochelle, David Long, whether it's Troy Reader, uh, you know, T. Howard over the last couple of weeks, you know, Oboe. I mean, I can keep Nick, Nick Scott. Just think about when when week 18, we lose our two starting safeties. So we, we open the playoffs with with maybe our third and fourth and those guys. The offensive linemen, there's been different guys play. I mean, we played at Minnesota on a on the day after Christmas and, and David Edwards is starting at left tackle because Witt and Noteboom are out with COVID and, 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 you know, we have to move him quickly in and maybe one of those games, someone got hurt. I just know all of a sudden Alaric Jackson's in. So to, to, to answer your question, no, it's, it's probably not talked about enough, totally understand why, but we couldn't do what we do without those type of players, whether they were drafted, you know, early, mid, late, signed as a college free agent, claimed off waivers, right? Uh, being their best when their best uh, was required uh, in the in the good old tone of our head coach, Sean McVay. Lord. Hey, Les, um, wondering, you know, with the build that you guys are in and sort of the ecosystem you guys have created in, in that sense, um, when you first started this um, when you guys first decided this was the direction that you were going to go um, did you know what the steps of it had to be or how far of a risk you could push um, and, and did you or did you find that along the way and then after 2018 um, realize how much further you either could or needed to push those risks uh, in correlation with the rest of the build yeah, I think it I think that because if I go back to the journey started right in 2012 when, when I was fortunate enough to to become the GM of the 
at that time, the St. Louis Rams. And, and that's when we were, I call all in on the build. And, and if, if we're all in on this phase and, and the build, we were almost doing it opposite, right? We were doing a lot of trades. We were trying to collect as many early picks as possible. We were trying to, right, draft well, uh, hit on core talent, you know, players like, like Aaron Donald. And from there, have those players, right, evolve, grow together. And, and, then, and then you're, there's, there's, there's definitely intentionality there. But there is uncertainty, like, will we ever break through? And I know we had some adversity a little bit along the way with the QB thing. But once we finally broke through, uh, at that point in time, Jordan, I do think you, in terms of the, the model, you, you probably have a good awareness that, okay, this model's working, right? It's allowing us to consistently win games. It's allowing us to consistently contend for the NFC West. So it does become – maybe a little bit simpler to go, oh, maybe we should tweak the model here versus tweak or tweak the model there. And again, everything's uncertain and, and you try to do it, but it, it becomes a, I think if you want to call it the, the problems become a little bit easier to identify, or maybe it's maybe you wouldn't call it problems, but the areas where maybe if we do something at that particular position or right in this particular you know, schematic, it might give us an edge. So thanks, Les. Gary. Hey, Les. Um, How's it going, Gary? Good. How are you? I am good. Good to be working in February. <laughs> Clocking in in February is a good thing in the NFL. Probably a great thing in the NFL. Better than uh, good. You know, um, it, it seems like you know you kind of, you discount a little bit the the attention on the free agents and you know the the storyline that it's entertainment and whatnot. But um, two questions: w Would you be here? Would you be in the Super Bowl without Odell Beckham Jr. and Von Miller if you hadn't made those that trade and those signings? And is this kind of the way you guys will operate going forward? Uh, almost you know, hearkening like the New York Yankees where you're going to go out and get free agents uh, and, you know, not necessarily, worry isn't the right word, but, you know, not, not worry too much about whether you have first round draft picks or not. Uh, you, uh, I, to answer your first question, we will probably, we would probably never know that, right? Uh, if we could be here without Vaughn or Odell because they are here and, and they played a, Right. A very, I mean, they were very impactful down the stretch. And, and that was the reason, I mean, that was the intention of, of bringing them in. And in, in Bond's case, we did know that he, he was coming in with a high ankle sprain. So that, that was going to take a little bit of time, but it, we, we discussed a lot that when we got to December and we got to January uh, when, you know, when he would be fully 100%, uh, there's a good chance that we're going to really, really, be glad we have that type of defender, right? To to partner with with Leonard and AD and and the rest of that that front seven and and Odell coming in, right? Boy, what I mean, you want to call it good luck on return of good luck on bad luck, right? We were bringing in Odell to be right to partner with with right Cooper, Robert and Van, and then holy cow, you know Odell's first day on the job. Uh, we lose Robert and and I mean that was that was tough adversity based on all that Cooper and Robert did with our offense so we had we had to take a couple steps back and 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 regroup and redesign and re-engineer uh uh during that process so that's the and, and I, I do think to answer your last question I I think we definitely really really think uh we have the let's call it the core the base in place to continue right, being a, a contender for the NFC West, not only this year, not only next year, but, you know, into some years to come. So we will always utilize, right, uh, whatever manner that, that's available to, to acquire players to help us, right, stay in and, and, and continue to consistently be, content, uh, you know, contenders. So we'll try to use our picks, uh, it's called in an innovative way, maybe in a creative way. And, 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 and sometimes it will be picking players in the draft. Sometimes it will be using them to, to maybe go acquire 
right? Whether it's it's using a fourth rounder to go acquire Sony Michelle, uh, because we did feel like, right, when we when we lost Cam and and we had Daryl Henderson, that we're, okay, we were thin there. And I think I think everybody on this call, that's especially our local writers, right? You, that's that was a topic of discussion in August. And but the other the backside of that algorithm is, you know, we'll probably we we gave up a fourth rounder for Sony, but we'll collect a fourth rounder for losing John Johnson last year. So, you know, using the compensatory formula and things like that. But when you're, uh, I'll end it by saying this, Gary. Uh, if there's one thing that that we can that I would say that sums up the way we're trying to do things right now is, right, we we've, we've gone through the build, we've broken through. We want to contend. So we're aware that, all right, there's a realistic shot that we can fight, that we can compete for being one of 32. And I do truly believe that if you're trying to be one of 32, the math does say we probably need to think a little bit differently, maybe do some things a little bit differently than the other 31 competitors or the other, you know, and there's not 31 that are probably truly competing for one on a yearly basis. Some teams are going to be all in on the build and things like that, but uh, that's what we're going to continue doing. And, and, and sometimes that thinking will work and sometimes it won't. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Les, uh, thanks for doing this. Um, Welcome, when, you brought, when you brought Weddle back, what were your expectations for, for what he could give you and how, how quickly did he blow past them? Yeah, I think it was okay. Let's get him to the practice field and see. Holy cow, can he still do it? Now, it's it is interesting. I think we all know Eric. The, the guy loves football. I mean, so he had kept in touch with Sean. He had kept in touch with right a lot of our defenders and a lot of our defensive staff. And and you know, after a game, you get a text, win or lose, right? Maybe congrats or hey, hang in there get them next week but you know eric's probably one of those guys that's you know texting about you know it's it's like listening to cooper cup right so you you he was still very very astute and nuanced in what we were trying to do and things like that so it was then okay but there's no doubt he has the passion he has the brain uh to come in and help us it's let's get him on the field and see can he physically do it uh and uh i remember when he first got here chatting with him I said he he had been working out and things like that but he did say that he had played a, a lot of five on five basketball over the last let's call it two years since he had really retired so when once when he told me those stories of the, you know those those days on the basketball court I think when we it's been a long time since I played five on five basketball but I do know this if, if I got a chance to go back to the hometown over Thanksgiving and and maybe even do 303 basketball on a full court, I'd probably wake up the next day and not be able to walk. So that did, uh, you know, that, that kind of cleared some things up in my mind. Like, you know what, Eric may have a shot, but to see him go and fit the run, uh, like he did against San Francisco, things like that, you know, after being away from the game for two years, that that's just, that's special. That's, that's, a, that's a lot going on there, both physically and intangibly. Thank you. Hey. Hi there. Um, I was wondering if you could briefly reminisce a little bit about the 2014 draft. Um, you know, you mentioned Aaron Donald, but um, Odell was taken right before that. And I'm just wondering what you kind of remember about, you know, those prospects at the time. And, um, you know, if you ever kind of followed Odell any more closely because you know remembering that draft or anything like that I, I do know i remember the draft if i so to be honest i remember that we picked reg robinson and so that that one that's going to stick with me a long time i believe that's the same draft right so with that pick right there's a lot of there's a lot of let's call it reverse engineering on what can you learn from that type of mistake and, and how do you write uh right improve your processes your systems your thought your your, th your thinking to, to try to limit those type of mistakes. I also think, holy cow, why did why didn't we trade up for Aaron Donald? Uh, things like that. But to, to answer your question too, Katie, I do know that that draft, and because at per, that particular time we did have Sam Bradford, and we hadn't truly figured out the the Rams wide receiver room yet. Right, we hadn't gotten back to the greatest show on turf days, and, and that draft. If if we got somebody could Google it right now with the Wikipedia, I mean that was. That wide receiver draft was 
was big time. And it seems like Sammy Watkins was a part of that. I think Mike Evans was probably a part of that. Brandon Cooks, I mean, he gets taken late in the in the in the, in the first round or later, and, and and he's still producing. So I forget the names. I do know we we spent a lot of time uh, evaluating them, and and I guess in hindsight, right, wouldn't have been a bad you know bad, bad pick as well to take Aaron Donald and one of those wide receivers. Hey, hey Les, thanks for taking the time. Um, First of all, what's the reference on your hat? Like not broken. You, know, it's it's a it's a cool reference in that uh, there's a coffee shop uh, called Biddy and Bows, and basically they probably it's about three years old, well known. It's been on uh, Today Show, I think all those type shows, but they they basically employ uh, all kids with with disabilities, and, and in particular Down syndrome. Uh, kids with our, I call it kids, young men and women who have Down syndrome. And those are the em employees of this uh, coffee shop. So uh, very fond of what they're doing there. I, when someone right, creates something like that, I'm like, wow, that, that person or that couple's making a, a huge difference on this planet in, in a way that, boy, do I admire and, and envy. But there's an, there, I, I started wearing this helmet. I think I've told uh, Jordan is. It, it was after the Green Bay game. A little bit double entendre meaning in that. Okay, we're on three game losing streak, but we're not broken. We got to do what we always do. Forget about uh, the past, uh, and but learn from it and apply lessons as quickly as possible, and continue on in the journey because this is this is a long journey. And so that's the that's the meaning of the not broken hat. But I can tell you this: the the Biddy and Bo meaning and what they're doing is way more important than right trying to uh, end a three-game losing skid in <laughs> professional football. Definitely. Um, real but quick. Thanks for asking that, Taylor. Yeah, no problem. I was just curious. Um, like one of the things Sean mentioned last week was you guys having a vision. And from a general manager standpoint, how important and how, you know, in lockstep have you and Sean been and being able to build up this roster, you know, both with the stars and with the draft picks, like you mentioned earlier. I, it, I can't say enough about Sean, our partnership. I mean, it, it, I call it, this is an imperfect uh, ecosystem, right, in terms of, of, of trying to come up with perfection. But he, he's definitely the perfect partner for myself for many reasons. Uh, and he's, he's such a good teacher of football. So it, it really, it really helps myself, our scouts, right? Because we could basically just sit in a meeting on him, probably uh, installing a game plan for the for the week to the to the offense players, even the defensive players, and and just the way he teaches what we're going to try to do that week. It, you know, if you listen closely, you'll know exactly right what type of players right we need and and what those players need to bring to the table and, and all of them you know we always say they, they don't all have to be perfect they don't have to all do it all but uh, if they've got one or two things that we can utilize that can be impactful for us let's put them in a position to be impactful so Stu, can't say enough about Sean. Stu, hey Les, in terms of the uh the team build model why does it work so well for you guys and what makes it difficult potentially for other teams to replicate just as far as the risks being taken and things like that yeah you know what I, I give the credit to to the people uh whether it's the you know whether it's the players that we acquire going back to where we're at right in the in the way this sport is covered and, and I refer to it sometimes as the entertainment business, and, and it is. I mean, that let's that's 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 reality, right? I mean, the, the ratings this thing garners, but sometimes, right, because of that, you just look at oh, it's it's Madden football. You're acquiring players, and they have this rating, and they're just going to all you no. Know, those guys actually have to right. They have to live it. They actually have to go and and plan and prepare, and then execute it on Sundays, and 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 when they're going through real life just like all of us i mean so i always give credit to the people and, and and the coaches and and working with them and and, and our scouts scouting it's it's the people uh 
we have a vision, but the people execute that vision. The people live that vision. That that's the vision that you know. That, that's the everyone living it becomes the the culture, and it, and it works. And 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 I do like to again going back. It, there's definitely risk. We like to refer to it sometimes of being bold and being bold, being a little bit more than just gambling per se. Right. Usually the way we term it, right? if you're bold, right, there's definitely uncertainty in what you're doing, especially because this thing, nothing's certain, especially uh, in NFL football, especially when you're got, you got to go fake it. You got to, you're usually going to play a team when there's, you know, when there's 11 others on the field trying to make sure you're not successful, right. At executing right your vision, but there's this element where if it doesn't work, it's not, it's not like the, we're going to implode or explode or cease to exist where sometimes we, we look at gambling is okay, wait a minute, you're going to do something. And if it doesn't work, right, then you're going to, you know, you're going to lose your 401k is going to go from whatever it is to zero. Right. So uh, we definitely, we definitely like the, in the, in the words of a, a really cool mentor of mine, Jim Collins, who, who wrote the book, good, to great. He's going to be a guest of mine at the Super Bowl, and, and, and always will be is, 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 is shoot bullets and then the cannonball. And, and the way that analogy is, is, is when you shoot in, in the old days, I guess, when, when you're a ship at sea and you got only so many cannonballs, you got to shoot the bullets first. And then when you hear that first bullet team hit the, you know, steel of that other ship and maybe shoot another bullet and you hear a ting, then you can use your, your cannonball. So we definitely try to take that approach. And when we do shoot the cannonball, we feel like there's a good chance uh, it will work out. Again, not certain. And then if it doesn't, it's not going to sink the ship. Thank you. Ethan. Hey, Les, good to see you. How's it going, Greg? Good, man. I've always been curious how your thinking evolved or didn't evolve over the last decade, because now that you're six six years out from the move from St. Louis, how did your job change when the Rams moved to LA? I mean, when you took over a two and 14 team, did you always have it in your mind to do business in the bold way with the veteran stars we've all, we've just been talking about, or did you feel like the trade up for Jared is what started that? Did you change your mind once you got to LA with a larger market and high expectations, or did this change when Sean and the Rams started winning in 2017? Probably all of those are true. Uh, we all evolve. I, I've been fortunate enough to, I've got the gene that I really, really, appreciate trying to learn and apply and evolve and 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 i'm not gonna say i'm not you know i don't want to get in the quirky like you get better every day because i do believe there's some days where you should actually take a day or two to not get better right like i think that's good like i i don't want to get better the day right you know but so but i i think i think i've laughed before a lot of times is even when we got to LA and, and you're a general manager and you, you have more, you definitely have a lot more losses than when you started as a rookie and you're zero and zero, right? And maybe you're a, a shiny new something, probably because of the, in my case, right? Because I was a Lieutenant in Atlanta and we had Matt Ryan at QB and, and all of a sudden Atlanta was, was having its, you know, first time we were ever winning, having winning seasons in consecutive years and things like that. So you're, you're kind of coming from a program and then maybe six years in, right. You, you have a Greg Robinson pick, you have a lot more losses and you laugh, like, you know, I'm a lot better GM today than I was when I was zero and zero and, and probably right. You know, was able, fortunate enough to, to get an interview and, and compete for the job and, and earn it. But a lot of that had to do with the program I was coming from. So, but I, I, going back to, to Jared Goff, and I think, and I forget, maybe Jordan, you asked it earlier. Uh, when you when you get to a point as you've been building, like depending on what analytics you really looked at during that that time from twelve to even our our four and twelve year here, and and if you remember here, it, it might have been. I mean, we were three and one, and might have been everybody in LA is like, holy cow, is this football? Is it boring? Because I mean, we were winning games six to three, probably, right? But point being on that is, uh, however you, we broke it down, we knew analytically, wow, we're, we play good defense, and we had played a lot of good defense, and maybe even some great defense from 12 to, to 16. But through that, right, you're like, but we've been so inconsistent at, at QB and each of those QBs, 
right? They, they went on to probably get a really good quality backup or bridge type starter contract, things like that, which is really cool for people like Case Keenum and, and, and to see, you know, the, the, you know, the fruit, I mean, to see them get rewarded for all the work they put into. So, but when you play good defense, you've been inconsistent on offense and, and maybe historically bad on offense, you're like, okay, wait, it makes it a little bit easier to make a bold move to try to go, right, try to go uh, solve the, the QB position. And, and so I, I think it, it's, it's the combination of everything, Greg, is, as you go through it, right, really assessing where you're at. Uh, on, even though even though we were four and twelve, uh, we did feel like wait a minute we have some young we, we've got a Todd Gurley here we have some young defenders we're not that far away even though if we would have said that after like January after hiring Sean everyone on this call you would have you, you should look at me like okay you've lost your mind but when you're really assessing and and going okay we're we're not far away so wait a minute we can probably tweak the wide receiver room and we can let Sean work with Jared and, and get the most out of Jared and we can then get the most out of Todd Grove and and right we, we bring in Wade and, and continue on defense and and all of a sudden wow uh, you know we, we have that breakthrough year so but the key is always truly assessing where you're at whether you're four and 12 or 12 and four and, and that's a little bit right we were 11 and five and Right, contended for the West and 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 won the wild card round, but uh, felt like, wait a minute, when when the Matt Stafford became available, maybe that's an opportunity, right, that we can't pass up on, and maybe we should make that move based on, you know, many variables. Thanks, Les. Ben. Hey, Les. Um, I was wondering, sort of piggybacking off of that question a little bit, but how the rest of the league zigs and you guys zag. And I was just wondering from a fundamental standpoint, like what influenced that approach to team building? Was there some sort of revelation that you had along the way that told you that this was the right way to go ahead and build this team? Interesting question, because sometimes when we sit here, I don't know if we look at ourselves as right, the rest of the league zigging and, and us zagging, right, per se. Uh, but, but, but maybe that is the case. And again, I, I, we, we definitely try to think differently and do things a little bit differently. And not just in player acquisitions, not just in scheme, but in, in athletic performance and in nutrition and in, in, in mental health, right? The, the l- little things that, hey, can we get an edge there and with the vision of, you know, all of that compounding over time and, and maybe giving us an edge, but uh, we do, we, on a simple point, we've always, Sean and I've really sat down and said, hey, whatever we do, I think I started it as a phrase when we first got to St. Louis, right? Wake up sprinting, don't be scared. Uh, in in the, the way Sean and I have worked together is, okay, let's, let's try not to do things just to, be safe. I call it, we call it get to eight and eight. Right. Uh, and again, everything we do, right. Is, is not always going to work out, but if we actually have enough research, enough data, data to think, okay, this is, this is the right thing to do right now. This is what we think we should do. Let's, let's do it. Right. Let's not let fear of what if it doesn't work out, keep us from right. Maybe, getting that edge uh, so that's it but it, it is interesting i i think going back though in talking to zigging and zagging i do think we could look at the patriots who, who've had a heck of a run in in this in this league you know doing things uh similar to us and that okay they, they were contenders uh and a lot of times when players like a bon miller even a obj came available then whether it was Randy Moss, right? They, all those players had done a lot in the league individually, but maybe they were willing to say, hey, I wonder if the Patriots would be interested because maybe if I go there, I can accomplish something that you don't accomplish as just being an all pro or a pro bowler or, or, or what have you, right? It's that it's that, that thing we're chasing this week, right? The, the, 
that the Rams will accomplish, not just the individual. So I think I think we've seen teams do this and and do it well at time when you when you bring on if you if you we term them right star players and if they're star players right they they earn that because they did something really really good probably <laughs> more years than once uh most of the time on sunday afternoons on a football field but toward the end of their careers or later in their careers right they were they were chasing they were chasing more right more than what you can accomplish as an individual so uh, that's what we've tried to do thank you Nick. Hey, Les, uh, thank you for doing this. Um, you talked about you and Sean McVay pretty much being in lockstep with one another and having that, that open communication. But from the last time you all went to the Super Bowl uh, in Atlanta to where you guys are currently, what changed specifically for you as far as just the mind state um, and how to approach different things? Or did anything you know significantly change where you guys had to approach maybe player personnel issues or coaching issues and things of that nature in order for you to be at the point that you are uh, playing in Super Bowl Fifty Six? The, the number one, the the simplest thing is we're, we're all, in, in particular, I mean, a lot of us that are still here, right, are, are more experienced now than we were then. Uh, and then how do you how do we use that experience to to help us move move forward? And and that's like we're a different team now uh, and, and for many reasons and, and we had to be, but there, there was the, the model still similar, right. Then, 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 right. We, 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 we wanted to be good at, at the QB position, right. We, we wanted to bring in, in established players to, to help us disrupt the, the QB to partner with, with Aaron Donald. We definitely knew along the way that if we were going to do things like, be a team that would take the take the trading of the ones out, but the, the, to make trades for Sony Mich Michelle, we would have to be disciplined on the back end, and 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 you're going to lose players uh, like John Johnson, who could obviously help a lot of football teams, uh, and, and then you you recoup a fourth, and and you and you you pay other players like Leonard Floyd and said so. The model is still the same. Sometimes the the players and and the coaches have actually change right it's fascinating that right we're, we're probably getting close to having four coaches from here that are now head coaches and and maybe i think it's it's five or six coaches that are now coordinators right and and one of them being liam in, in college football so uh but i think the experience and and knowing right the the core let's the core variables of the model and then how you you write, try to keep those variables as consistent as possible. Thank you, Les. Modesty. Modesty. Hey, Les, good to see you. Um, hey, Kevin. Since, since you're uh, obviously always thinking beyond the next game, even if it's the Super Bowl, I'm wondering what will be the first challenges, win or lose, the, 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 first, challenge, the first tasks or the, the main challenges uh, whenever you start <laughs> really diving into the 2020 off season, I mean, based on the roster you have, the, the, the contracts, the financials, the challenges. If I was honest, Kevin, too, I can tell you over the last two or three weeks, really have only tried to focus on, <laughs> on this moment, this opportunity, because it doesn't, it doesn't come around. I, I think, I think it's 25 years of me being in this league and counting the years when, right. You were, you were, right getting people coffee but it maybe had a chance playing conference championship five of those years so you, you try to you, what we're trying to do now is is like we do everything is okay we got one more game it's a very important game and let's pour into that uh and maybe there's a little bit of superstition in that kevin like really do i don't, I don't know if i want to think about you know next week until after next week uh but throughout the throughout this season what i do personally as a general manager Right. Because I really I mean, it's not I'm not I can't help Sean. I can only hurt Sean and this coaching staff try to right go game plan and things like that. And, and, and we have a lot of people right kind of, you know, executing different roles, supporting Sean, supporting the coaches, things like that. But as a general manager, because it is such a structured 20 plus weeks, spend a lot of time preparing for the draft, spend a lot of time right watching our team and, and not only the guys that are going to be. Uh, let's call it 
who's in the last year of their contract, but okay, it, it, the guys that are playing behind them. And if we were to lose, right, a certain player, like do, who, who's in house that can solidify that position, right? What, what's the, what's the draft uh, look like at those positions and, and, and things like that. And, and, and you're also looking again, when you go, okay, wait a minute, trade deadline and, and a bond Miller comes available. Okay. What do we think adding someone like him to our, to our batting lineup, you know, on that, that front four, that front seven, how does that help? So th- I spent the last 20 something weeks, right. Looking at what we have to do, or at least I say this, the tasks that are going to be before us. Uh, and that'll start, that'll start early, right. Combines here in a, in a couple of weeks and, and then free agency. So we're well aware that we got some work to do, but I'm being honest, Kevin, I'm not thinking too, too much about it this week. All right. We'll ask on Monday morning. Wow. Kevin. Hey, way to go, Kevin. Late morning. <laughs> Uh, Ken is zero. You're a tough team. You're not even going to give us, the, you know, Monday off. <laughs> hey, if, for all students, just so we know, don't take Kevin's class. <laughs> tough teacher. Hey, Les. Uh, Mark Canizero from the New York Post. Thanks for doing this. Um, I'm just curious. I mean, this league has been uh, one that protects its number one draft picks like parents protect their children, basically. What is it like for somebody in your position not to have a, a number one pick on draft night and and how, how 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 anxious is that for you and have you gotten used to it and just as a quick follow to that do you feel like teams particularly if you win on sunday you know, because this is a copycat league may may try to trend a little bit toward what you guys have been doing since this model has has you know looked so good uh, it, it, so the few questions there I, it, the, I laugh because i'm like you know it really makes Thursday nights, uh, not stressful at all, right? We can actually have fun not having ones. But I, but going to that, I think since we haven't had a number one draft pick, I think, and I, and I don't know the exact number, but I, I think we're probably four, three, maybe five in total number of draft picks. So what that does do is that it doesn't, I'm not going to say it intensifies the, the draft preparation, but it, we definitely spend a lot of time preparing for the draft because we, I think I, I, I can't say this. And I, in fact, I think our analytics group had said that someone had written an article. Uh, again, you got to fact check this when, whenever they, we had the final four teams, two conference championships that maybe we had the most homegrown players. So that's being players that are drafted on our team and even players that we signed in, in college free agency. So, uh, we definitely think the draft is important because that w- when you have young players that are developing and we have attrition and, and I, I think someone who's dear to my heart's been been a big part of this who's now consulting with us JW Jordan right he, he used to uh, he was with the Colts a lot you know during their Peyton Manning years and, and a Bill Polian disciple but uh he used to have the picture of the Malcolm Butler interception uh, in that Super Bowl and on his office. And, and he would teach our young scouts that, uh, hey, let's don't spend a lot of time talking about the starters because when we're playing our most important games, a lot of times those guys may be injured, maybe beat up, maybe not on the field. And, and lo and behold, there's a rookie college free agent, right, that's from West Alabama. I don't know if anybody had been to Livingston, Alabama before, but it's, it's, it's not on your bucket list because I grew up in the state, know a lot about Livingston. Uh, and, and, and the, but the moral of the story is the draft's very important because a lot of guys that we drafted that played this year, played an integral, integral part, made plays at, at big time. So you're definitely going to use those and, and going, I, I've seen the, I think we've seen over the last few years, uh, right. Teams that are, aware that they may be building right they've they've traded some of their uh maybe better players better veterans because maybe they not the best fit right during that during that players where he's at in his timeline and his career for where they're at as a team to to do maybe what teams do and, and try to collect those early picks and 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 draft poor players and uh i i mean i i 
the Indianapolis Colts have, have done a little bit right where they, they traded, I think, a, a one for for uh, the defensive lineman from Sam Pham, uh, Prince, I mean, Buck. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buckner, yeah. yeah. There you go. I'm, I wanted to call him. It's not Brinston, is it? Brinston Buckner may be from Columbus, Georgia. Went to Wisconsin, played a lot of years with the Niners. But could be getting him wrong, but it's DeForest, right? Yep. Princeton's kind of close to my hometown, so that's that's where that went. But we've seen teams, right, use their first round pick, and I think a lot of times is the teams are are betting on that maybe they're going to be picking a little bit later in the first round, and it might be better to use that later first round pick, right, on a proven player who might have been a top fifteen pick, but he's already lived up to top fifteen billing. You're, you're not necessarily still trying to project. So. We've seen that uh, seeping in a little bit, not just because of our success, but maybe because of, you know, other people doing it, you know, and their successes as well. Thank you, Les. All right, we'll wrap up with you, Stacey. You on mute, Stacey. Okay, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, Les, I'll take you on my five-on-five five team still, just saying that first and foremost. <laughs> uh, you know, my, I, self-esteem, it's always good to get a good ego boost when you're, <laughs> 50 plus. You know, I used to make a career fouling people, but I'm like, wow, I don't even know if I could be a hard fouler anymore. Not uh, shocking. I'm still, you get there. Um, so now, here- let me tell you this, though. It would be an honor to be on your five because what I do know what I would do is I would tell the us four who are on your team, hey, let's do everything we can to get the ball to Stacy. <laughs> get out of the way. Yes. Give me the rock. Give me the rock and get me some players. Um, so, hey, my question is this, Les. What has exceeded your expectations of Matthew in his journey with you guys this season? And in part with that, do you recall the adrenaline that you felt when you made that acquisition and the adrenaline you feel this week, understanding how he's performing, which is extraordinary? Yeah, it, it, Excellent use of the word because I think adrenaline, right, it, that night when we made the deal, there was a lot of adrenaline there, a lot of it, excitement uh, with us, the Rams, it, and Matt and his family, and 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 still going to this day. But it, it, the two things I can think, if you want to call it exceeding expectations, is is just getting to know Matt Stafford. It's like it's, I mean, it's like he's – and again, I grew up in the South SEC, and, and uh, you, you've been around quarterbacks that had success like him, and and I'll call it like this: made the money that that he has, and and, and sometimes there's an element of, I mean, they live differently. Uh, they've earned it. It's a hard job, but when you sit with Matt, I mean, it's like you you think you're sitting with with you know the guy who played quarterback at Georgia and maybe had a cup of coffee in the league and he he's back right being the play-by-play for Georgia football he's just he's just a great humble guy that you go that's 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 rare like this is a this is one of those QBs when he got drafted right you you're basically heck getting 60 70 million guaranteed just to be good at Georgia and 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 to see him not change and, and then to to know that uh or to certainly see them over the years, read about them, look at a data sheet and go out. Wow, he's had so many comebacks in his life and, and he's done that for us this year. And, and when, 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 they, when Tampa got the fourth and one and, and I looked up and said, holy cow, it's 40 something seconds left on the clock. I'm, I'm betting on Matt Stafford right now. Uh, we, we might have wanted – if they would have just gotten a yard there, it might have felt good in that moment, right, because it wasn't tied yet. But maybe they would have tied the game with only nine seconds left and we were heading to overtime. But when we got either unlucky or lucky that they scored and left 40-something seconds, it was like the, – if you want to call it exceeding expectations is – I'm I'm living it with him, partner with him. I'm like, okay, I believe he's going to do this, and and it's not just because I can look at a spreadsheet and say he's done it 40 times or 50 or whatever the number is. It's because we've seen him do it here, and and to go from that great guy, right? That's just an unbelievable guy that like, ooh, eat his spinach and turn into 
pie pie in those moments. I mean, that's when I go back to you make these trades and things. Those are real human beings like doing that down there on that football field in those moments on a, on a Sunday afternoon. I mean, sometimes it's an honor just to be able to go shake their hand in the locker room. 